What is going on, everybody? Uh, in this video, we're going to spin up a VM on GCP uh, and then install Docker all with Terraform. I made a video a little while back that showed how to do this, but we used a startup script and then a flag file uh, to determine whether that script had run before and then prevent it from running. So about the time I was researching slash got that video done, uh, a few people, and actually I have a text document here, note to myself, uh, Dimitro Alexandrov in a Slack channel pointed out I could use user data and uh, so did Joseph Mikado on LinkedIn right after I posted the video. Now the thing about that is user data will run when your instance is created, whereas a startup script is going to run every time that instance restarts, uh, which if you have a flag file, uh, it'll see that and then not run the script on subsequent reboots, uh, but that just doesn't feel clean and tidy. Uh, so user data is the way to go. The issue with that is there's not really a lot of documentation out there. Uh, the GCP documentation is kind of buried and doesn't really describe it well. And on Terraform, it really doesn't mention it. So uh, all that out of the way, that's why I'm making this video, uh, just to show a cleaner solution uh, and walk through that. Uh, now a few assumptions uh, that you have Terraform installed, you have a GCP account, uh, and you have a project there, as well as Compute Engine API enabled. So let's jump right in. I have a project here I just created. I enabled the Compute Engine API. That does take a moment and didn't want to waste time on the video. So if you just click the hamburger here, go down to Compute Engine, if you don't see this, you'll probably see Enable API, click that, give it a few minutes, and then you're good to go. Now next, we're gonna want to uh, create an SSH key, uh, which is going to be placed in the instance. You can do that in Terraform as well, uh, but creating the user directory and copying the SSH key over uh, is a little more in-depth uh, than I want to go in this video, so I'm just going to focus on uh, the user data. So if we go here to metadata, we see we don't have any SSH keys. So if we just search for uh, SSH GCP keygen, we'll just click that and we can just copy this here. Let me make sure that's big enough, not too big. Uh, you can type that out or just hit the nice copy button there. And in a terminal, we'll just paste that in. Uh, just out of habit, I usually call my users Gary. And I'll just do uh, Terra GCP for uh, for the name of the file. And this is going to generate a public key and a private key in our .ssh directory, in our home directory, and the private key we will keep to ourselves, the public key, which we'll know because it has a .pub extension we're going to put into the compute engine metadata on GCP. Something just floated into my eye. Great. <laughs> All right, passphrase, we can just enter through that. All right. So from the previous video, uh, and I'll put a link to this down in the description, uh, we have the Docker install with Terraform. And now I did make another directory, GCP user data. So here I'm just going to copy this. And then in the terminal, get clone, paste that in, and then we can cd into that directory. 
I think that's big enough. Hopefully it is. Use tab to autocomplete, and we can see uh, we have all the files here from the GitHub repo, uh, and we want to go to GCP user data. And if you have Visual Studio code installed, you can just type, and you're on Linux, you can just type code dot to launch Visual Studio code here. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, we do need to modify these files a little. And actually, there are a few things I need to fix. So uh, let me, real quick, I'm going to go up one directory and then uh, go into the GCP directory. And uh, let's see, how do I want to do that? You know what? I can just do. Mm, list these out. Oh, actually, it was up one directory. Uh, the easiest way is probably I'm going to cd back into uh, the user data. And then I'm going to copy dot dot for up one directory. And what do I want to copy? The Docker install. And I want to put it in the directory I'm in now, which that's kind of hard to see. There is a space and then a dot. Sorry if that's confusing. Uh, so cp copy up one directory, the directory I want to copy, and dot meaning copy it here. Uh, let's see. Oh, and because it's a directory, I need to do r for recursive. And now we should be good. Okay, now opening up the main.tf. Uh, went through this in the other video, so I'm not going to go through it again. Uh, we are not going to be using the flag. And let's see. Uh, a few kind of gotchas. Again, uh, I'll link the previous video down in the description so you can go back and check it out if you'd like. Uh, but you can use gcloud to list the images. Uh, we come down here. That variable's no longer there. And so as opposed to uh, the last one where we had startup script here in the metadata, we have user data. And let's see, who am I? These are commented out, so that's good. Uh, that file is not going to exist because that's what I just deleted. And we are not going to run the Python file. And let's go to our install. Uh, make sure that this name here, this, in my case, Gary, matches up with what you generated the SSH key as. Uh, so that was the name at the very end. Uh, but you're going to want to want those to match. Uh, otherwise, uh, strange things will happen. Okay. All that out of the way, we do have one last step. I need to go ahead and cat uh, the SSH. And actually, I'll navigate to it. It's probably, probably more instructive if you're coming into this uh, a little bit newer. So CD takes me to my home directory. I can CD to my .SSH directory. And here, I just happen to know that it is terra-gcp.pub. And we're going to grab all of this. Again, if you're setting the compute engine metadata, any compute engine you start in that project is going to have this public key, which means anyone with your private key can access it. So uh, just be aware of that. Uh, it would probably be cleaner to put it in the Terraform uh, script itself or, uh, you know, maybe... Actually, I don't know if you can add it after you create the instance. I think you can. Uh, but again, I think that would take up quite a bit of time. All right. So everything here looks good. Control tilde to get a, a terminal here. And Terraform init. Make sure uh, we download all the providers, all that 
good stuff we need to run this. See if I can make this a little bit bigger. Terraform plan. All right, I don't see any red, so that's always good. Uh, and that's, again, go into it in the other video, uh, just telling you what changes are going to be made. So we'll do Terraform apply. And we need to select yes. And that's gonna take maybe a minute or so. And then once that's done, because we have this little piece here, I kind of face planted there a little bit. Uh, you need to have this little part, as far as I know, unless they fixed it in the past month, uh, to be able to uh, spit out your public IP address. Uh, and in case you're wondering, uh, yes, I am killing time right now because I happen to know from experience it's going to take a minute or two for Docker to install. Uh, but if you jump the gun and go to your instance uh, and you get a permission, uh, something about the sock, that kind of thing, just go over here. And maybe I should have done that just to show you. Uh, and you can just do new GRP Docker and, uh, or just log out, log back in. That'll probably give it enough time as well. Okay, moment of truth. And uh, yes, uh, to add that to my known hosts. Uh, here I am now on my GCP instance. If I ls, there's nothing in my home directory. Uh, and we should be able to docker run Hello world. <laughs> I did not give it enough time. So new GRP Docker. Can't use up arrow uh, because uh, it's it's a new session at this point. Okay. So I ended up showing it anyway. So that's kind of good. Um, so if if you go ahead and you get in there and you're ready to go and you see permission denied var run docker.sac, uh, just run this last command. Again, if I had waited another moment or two, uh, we would have been fine. But, um, I don't know, I like showing the errors because, well, if you're watching this, you'll probably run into some errors. Uh, kind of wish I had run into some more. Uh, but again, uh, the previous video, which is a little bit more detailed, is going to be down in the comments. But before we go, uh, as always, Let's go ahead and exit. And I'm gonna switch back here to GCP just so we can see and go down to Compute Engine, uh, VM Instances. I guess hit refresh. And uh, there is our um, VM instance. Uh, in case you're a little bit confused about the IP, I made a mistake and did not update my project ID uh, so I actually created the VM in a different project, so I quick switched it to the right one, spun it back up, uh, and if you're going to reuse this again and you just want to turn it off, you can do that here, uh, but let's clean up everything. So uh, the right way to do this, uh, we're going to exit again uh, because we ran new GRP Docker. Uh, it's kind of a terminal in a terminal, I think. So exit until we get back to our computer and we're going to run, not Docker, uh, Terraform destroy. And that's going to uh, get rid of that VM for us. Uh, we just need to type yes. And while that's running, if we wanna really clean up everything, we can go back to the metadata, SSH keys, Edit, oh, I always forget where this is. And I will be not reusing this. 
Oh, there we go. Delete item. Don't know why I always have so much trouble uh, doing that. Uh, so that's no longer in our project. Uh, if we wanted to spin up more VMs and be able to SSH to it, uh, you could leave that in there. And uh, just because, well, I'll get to that in a moment, or maybe I should have done it there, uh, but we'll give that a minute. And just because I have revealed uh, my public key, which really isn't too bad, uh, but I'll go ahead and make sure I remove my private key, which is the same name without the pub. And also, this should autocomplete all the way now. I'll remove the public key as well, uh, just so I don't get mixed up. And let's see if we hit refresh. Our VM is indeed gone. Uh, so, again, that's the correct way to uh, use Terraform to, well, as far as right now and as far as my knowledge, that is uh, the nice clean way to uh, spin up a VM, uh, get Docker installed uh, by using user data. Uh, I kind of like that I went through the exercise of getting that to work with the startup script. Uh, more tools in your tool belt. So uh, if you do want something to run every time or you want it only certain portions to run every time, uh, you know, maybe you could do that, uh, use a flag file uh, to kind of uh, manipulate how the program runs and get the desired functionality. Uh, but that's it for this video. Hopefully you got some useful information out of it and I'll catch you in another video.